I think we can all agree that the human immune system is pretty amazing and needed to keep us safe and well. Sometimes, however, it can go a bit wrong. And the question I'll be answering in this video is, what causes allergies? Why do some substances that, for most of us, have no effect, make some of us ill, and can even threaten our lives? But before we get on the learning curve, if you found this video useful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more sciencey content. Well, it's learning curve time. One of the main features of our immune system are antibodies. These are proteins made in response to infection, and we can see one here. At one end, there are two arms. The ends of these arms have got a specific shape, and these will be able to bind to chemicals that have a complementary shape. In other words, the opposite shape. And they'll only be able to bind to chemicals that have that complementary shape. And this is the way that antibodies, indeed the way that most proteins function. They recognise chemicals that will fit into them. There are different types of antibodies, and the ones that we're interested in this video are called IgE antibodies. Ig just stands for immunoglobulin, and that's another name for antibodies, so don't worry about that. Allergic reactions are caused by the interaction of four types of immune cells. These are antigen presenting cells, and these first encounter the allergen, T cells, specifically a type of T cell called a Th2 cell, B cells which will produce the IgE antibodies, and mast cells, and these will cause the effects of the allergies that we see. If an allergy is to develop, a series of events involving these four types of cells will occur. Firstly, we have to encounter the chemical that's going to cause the allergy. This could be pollen, or broken fragments of dog hair, or certain chemicals in food. And this chemical is called the allergen, and each allergen has got a different shape. Antigen presenting cells will engulf the allergen molecules and display the allergen on their own surfaces. It will then show or present the allergen to a kind of cell called a Th2 cell. The Th2 cell has proteins on its surface that are complementary to the allergen, and so the Th2 cell recognises the allergen presented to it and in response produces a chemical called interleukin-4. And now we come to the B cells. The job of B cells is to produce antibodies. There are lots of different types of B cell, and each type of B cell can only make one type of antibody with one specific shape. Each B cell has on its surface copies of the antibody that it can produce. Allergen molecules will also bind to these antibodies, and together with interleukin-4, this will stimulate the B cells to divide, so there are lots and lots of them all the same, and they will then start to produce the IgE antibodies. One end of the IgE antibodies will recognise and bind to the allergen, but the other end is specialised to bind to a different type of cell, called a mast cell. The antibodies will circulate in the blood until they encounter a mast cell, and these mast cells are found all over the body, but especially in the mucous membranes of the nose and the airways. They will then bind to the mast cell and stay there. Up until now, there's been no allergic reaction, but the mast cells are sensitised and ready. If you never encounter the allergen again, you'll not have an allergic reaction. But if you do, then an allergic reaction will occur. For an allergic reaction to occur, this means we've come into contact with the allergen again. It will bind to the antibodies that are attached to the mast cells, and this will cause the mast cells to then produce a chemical called histamine and it's histamine that causes the symptoms of the allergies. So let's take a look at what histamine does. Firstly, histamine makes the blood capillaries leak more, and so fluids leak out of our blood vessels. This causes localised swelling, and also leads to reduced blood pressure as the blood vessels are losing fluid. Fluid leaking out of the capillaries in our nose and eyes also causes a runny nose and a watery eyes. This fluid also leaks out into our airways, which makes us wheezier. And this, coupled with the constriction of our airways, makes breathing more difficult. Histamine also makes our sensory nerve endings more sensitive, and this makes us itch more. I'll come back to that later. In most people, these symptoms are an annoying nuisance, but hardly life-threatening. However, in a small number of people, the reaction to allergens is so extreme that it can be fatal. Anaphylaxis, as it is known, is an extreme reaction to an allergen. In this reaction, the airways can constrict so much and become so full of fluid 
that they can actually become blocked, leading to asphyxiation. Combined with this, the sudden loss of fluid from the blood can cause the sufferer's blood pressure to drop suddenly and dramatically. So why do we have allergies at all? After all, the immune system is supposed to help us, not potentially kill us. Allergies are part of an immune system response called a hypersensitivity. This means that the immune system is responding to substances that it isn't meant to. The IgE antibodies are actually supposed to help to protect us against parasitic infections. That's why one of the symptoms of an allergic reaction is itchiness. If the system was indeed responding to a parasite, the itching would cause us to scratch, hopefully removing the parasite from our skin. In fact, in regions of the world where parasitic infections are still common, it's found that allergies are much less frequent than in places without as many parasitic infections. We don't fully understand what causes allergies, but there are a number of ideas, and it could in fact be any of them, or more likely a combination. It could be genetic, as we largely inherit our immune systems from our parents. In fact, interesting studies have been done on human mate selection and the immune system, but well, that's maybe for another video. It may be due to what is known as the hygiene hypothesis. Initially, this looked at the correlation between increasing hygiene practices and the incidence of allergies, and suggested that in early life our exposure to different microbes helped our immune systems to develop properly. And since we are now much cleaner, we don't come into contact with microbes so often. This has the unwanted effect of causing our immune systems to develop in unintended ways. This idea has been largely superseded now by the idea that it isn't just microbes in general that are important to the development of our immune systems, but a certain specific set of microbes that we've co-evolved with. It is important to note that the hygiene hypothesis does not state that having more childhood illnesses is a good thing. Hygiene is very important and has been at least partly responsible for our improved life expectancy over the last two centuries. So don't go thinking that we need to get ill more. That's not what this hypothesis is saying. So that's one way in which our immune system gets things a bit wrong and leads to allergies. It just remains for me to say thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.